Welcome to the Golf Fitness Bomb Squad podcast with Chris Finn, a production of P4S Golf. Welcome back to the Golf Fitness Bomb Squad. I'm your host, Chris Finn. And today we're going to continue the conversation that we had on the last episode, uh, but get more into the application for you as the golfer in terms of how the heck do you figure out what training aids, what technology like is actually going to be useful, is actually accurate, and is actually going to help you, which ultimately is the only thing that matters. If you didn't listen to the last episode, definitely go check it out. I uh, dove a little bit into some of the new tech that's coming out, particularly markerless uh, technology so that you can basically analyze swings. Like for instance, take your phone and it will automatically give you 3D mapping and everything of your body. Uh, pretty sweet and pretty cool technology. Uh, still a lot to, that needs to be done with it in terms of accuracy and, and getting it to the general market at affordable rates. But um, I, I, I do have some insider knowledge and it's coming sooner than you think. So, um, so definitely listen to that last episode. But Today, what I want to talk about, um, I had a couple instances where uh, people <laughs> like people came up with presentations. It's funny when you, as I was walking around a lot with, with Kyle Berkshire, um, just at the show the day that he was there, um, we do a lot with him and a lot of his sponsors and, and whatnot. So we spent a lot of the day with him and it was so funny how many people come up to him to try to sell him stuff. <laughs> and just being in the group and then being identified, hey, you're the, you know, you're the fitness guy that, or you're the doctor. You know, it's, it's funny the way these guys come up. Oh, you're, you're Kyle's doctor. Well, not actually, but sure. Thanks. Uh, but how many people came up with products that they were trying to sell and how many of those products sucked and the people selling them had no idea like how their stuff even worked. It was wild to me. There was one guy that came up for a product to help the neck, I think it was. And he was like, yeah, it, it, it helps. He, and he drops like a couple of key words. You know, the neck fibers are, are aligned in a diagonal pattern. So you've got to train them diagonally. I was like, okay, cool. What does it do for like, what, what are the performance gains for golfers, right? And so these would be for you guys listening, a couple questions to ask. Uh, if, if you're talking to someone who's trying to sell you something, ask them this question. If you're just online, like ask yourself this question and see if you can figure out the answer. And the first question, how does this objectively improve golf performance? Okay. And if you want to go a step further, how does it objectively improve golf performance in an area that I need? Right. So if you, um, so I'll use myself as an example, last year playing competitive golf, I hit 74% of fairways. I only hit like 50% of greens in regulation. Okay, so if I'm just looking at those two stats, my bigger gain is not going to be in, you know, driver and, and my average driving is like 300 yards, right? So I'm not my average, my biggest return probably is not coming in off on my driver off the tee. It's probably coming in my accuracy with my second shot with my irons and, and hitting, you know, wedges, those sorts of things. Um, so if I am being sold a product that's going to improve my club head speed or include driving, I'm much less interested in that versus something that's going to improve my accuracy or my my percentage of greens and regulations hit, right? So hopefully that makes sense for, you know, so not only does it, how does this product improve my golf performance, but specifically how does it do it for you in a way that's going to matter and that's going to be meaningful and impactful, okay? Uh, whether that be obviously performance or enjoyment, you know, getting out of paint, whatever that may be. So back to this conversation. <laughs> so, so how does it improve golf performance? He goes, I don't know. So like, okay, bad start. <laughs> I said, I said, well, how does, what is it like? Why would I? He goes, oh, it improves your neck rotation. I was like, okay, well, you know, neck rotation is one of the four rotary centers. I'm thinking in my head, right? Like, maybe there's something here. I said, well, how much does it improve neck rotation? He pauses and he goes, we don't know. It gets better though. Like, okay, uh, not a very compelling story right now. Um, but like, this is literally the guy's sales pitch. Like he couldn't answer two very simple questions of what's the average improvement that we see and how does this even improve, you know, golf performance. You're at the freaking P PGA show. You think you'd know something about how it helps golfers. Right. Um, and it wasn't just this one, this one sales, right? Like this was, uh, if you listen to the last episode, this was the, the markerless technology. There was more than one that, that came up that, and then also that I talked to Boost that just didn't know. Uh, any of this stuff. And then, you know, there were a couple at least that said like, oh yeah, we, we, we know we need to know that. 
we don't know now, but we're working on it. And I was like, oh, cool. Well, at least you're, you're working on it. Uh, but these are questions. And, you know, whenever you look at a product, you know, whether like maybe it's over speed training or some sort of speed training device, maybe it's grip strengthening devices. Maybe I'm just I'm running through my head everything that I saw there. Maybe it's a, you know, a new uh, a fitness app. Maybe it's a, uh, a training tool that's supposed to help you create lag. If it's, uh, you know, better ball strike, right? First, first question is to be, well, like, like, how does it improve that? Whatever, you know, insert whatever they say. And how do we, how did you measure that? Right. And so if they can say, well, we measure that, you know, it improves it by doing this and we measured it by doing, you know, you know, A you know, improves it by A and then we did it by measuring, you know, by B. Great. You know, then ask, what was the sample size? Like, how many people have you done this with? What's the, what are these numbers based off of? And that, this would be kind of the last level of question just for the average person, you know, asking, you know, and looking, researching training is, you, know, you should see, you know, at least more than like 30 people minimum, but, you know, ideally, you know, get into the hundreds plus, you know, if all you see are like a case study here or a case study there. I think, unfortunately, now a lot of the products are using case studies as quote unquote research um, when it actually is not. <laughs> it's you know, seeing one person get a result does not extrapolate to say that that will work for everybody. We know very well, very much so from our research and you know, just general research in general that every human is different. There are buckets and groups you can you can. Put, if you have a big enough sample size, you can group people into buckets and certain groups of people will respond better to certain things uh, and differently to certain things. Um, but when you're researching something to help your golf improve, you know, golf performance, what, you know, like I said, either it's technical, it's uh, you know, on the instructional side, maybe it's on the fitness side, maybe it's um, you know, equipment wise. Just go back to those couple of questions. How does this improve golf performance? And is, you know, and specifically, how does it improve my golf performance in, you know, insert the area that's important to you. And then if they can answer those two, then say, great, well, by how much, <laughs> in how long, and how do you know, like, how many people did you, have you done this on? What were the, you know, what were the constraints of, of how you did it? Um, so for instance, if somebody says, oh, it's all self-reported that people feel better, you know, versus that they say, oh, we had a hundred people randomly go through it we measured it we you know or even a third party measured it and these were the results that they saw and like that second example should be much more compelling to you than people just quote unquote felt better right i mean I have look at you know years and years of golf instruction and you know the old days of people oh it feels better well did you score any different did your ball metrics change <laughs> like well no okay well it doesn't matter like feel and real are not aligned a lot of the times right and that's, that happens in golf instruction. This happens in fitness all the time. You know, uh, there's a, there was a, um, example of a fitness product that was out there, um, or basically it's electrical muscular stimulation. It's a big suit that you put on and it like, it, you know, makes you feel like in 20 minutes, like it fatigues everything out basically. Right. So you feel like you got, you feel like you got absolutely destroyed. You had an amazing workout. Well, then when you ask, Hey, how does this actually improve golf performance? their silence. <laughs> well, well, what does it actually improve? What is it training? Right. And, and again, you got to look at the buckets of people. If you haven't done anything, throwing on that suit, like literally just doing anything is going to help you get better. So if throwing on the suit is what gets you excited, throw on the suit and get excited. Like if you haven't done anything, I'm sure it'll, it, it's going to help you. I'm hundred percent positive. You're going to be better than, you know, doing nothing. If you at least do the suit right now, if you're somebody who's been working out multiple days a week for years, and you just throw on a suit and you've already been doing strength training, right? Like, and let's say you stop doing barbell training and dumbbell training. And now all you do is the suit. Well, now you're, you're, you've actually have less over, you know, if any overload, you're just fatiguing out muscles. Like you're actually going to get worse. Let's say your limitation is mobility and you throw on that suit. A suit doesn't do anything for your mobility. It's doing jack for it. <laughs> like, so again, that suit doesn't actually help what your problem is, right? But for that person who's doing nothing, that suit could be great, right? So, and this, again, just back to the point of, we talk about it a lot you know, at P4S Golf about assessing and not guessing. And we talk about the rotary centers and then you have to be able to control them with stability. And then you got to be able to have to be strong enough to move them and create force. 
and you got to be able to be, you know, have the, the power to move them fast. And that creates the speed, right? There's these layers of training. Everybody listening right now has a different area of improvement that will get them the biggest return on their time and money investment. And when you're looking at all these new products, you know, wherever you see them, they pop up on an ad, you, you're looking in magazines or online, you know, wh wherever you are, please, I implore you, go through this just basic kind of questioning of how does this help golf performance in general? Specifically, how does this help me, my golf performance and what I need, right? And if they, you don't like those two answers, move on to the next one. If you do like those two answers, they make sense to you, they sound reasonable, then go to that next layer of questioning and say, well, hey, if it's going to help golf performance and specifically you're telling me it's going to help me in an area that I know that I need, how do you know and how much? Like how much is it going to improve and how do you know, right? And if they have not done any research, they're just, you know, it's just marketing, then move on. If they've done some research, they have tons of testimonials and, and they, they're of people who are, have the same kind of bucket as you and kind of very similar, then maybe it's worth a shot. Um, but at least just please do your research, you know, being at the show with the, the resurgence of golf and how much it's grown since COVID, you could tell there were a lot of people trying to make money in the game of golf, right? There were so many just, excuse my friend, shit projects out there. There just were so many terrible ones out there um, that there are, if you're not approaching what you're using and training with um, from both a technical and an instructional standpoint, as well as from a fitness and and, and kind of health wellness standpoint, you're liable to waste money. And unfortunately, in some instances, you probably get hurt. So, so please, uh, just to wrap up, ask those questions. Just to, I'm, gonna, I'm beating a dead horse here. How does it help golf performance? And how does it help my golf performance specifically in the area that I care about and that I need? That was, that's number one. Number two, you get past that threshold. How do they know that it helps it? And how much does it help it? Right? So did they actually know how much or how it works <laughs> and if so you know how much can how much of a return can you expect is something that you want to actually put your time and money and, and effort into so uh hopefully that helps guys uh it is a totally overwhelming show if you ever get a chance to go uh it's definitely cool to check out you always got the demo day on tuesday uh at the orange county uh you know basically the the, the circle driving range it's like a mile around it's pretty cool uh and then you obviously have the show you know wednesday thursday friday um, anything and everything from balls to launch monitors to socks and head covers uh, and you know, golf parts and everything in between. So uh, thanks so much for hanging out and we look forward to catching you on the next episode.